Guys, before this video starts, I want to tell you about this sick website that sells hella cheap NBA jerseys. The website is ringchasers.com. I copped myself a few jerseys on there a while back, and I honestly don't know how their prices are this cheap. If you guys want to get a sick deal on a jersey, make sure you check them out. Link will be in the description, and use code LQG at checkout for an extra 10% off. What's going on guys, it's LQG, and today I'm back with another video. So today we have for you guys NBA Legends explain their clutchest moments. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below which videos to do next, and I'll keep bringing these videos for you guys. Also, make sure to smash the like button. Let's see if we get 100 likes on this video. And make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch all the new content. We are releasing daily videos for the rest of 2021, so make sure you don't miss out. With that being said, let's get into NBA Legends Explain their clutchest moments. Like Steve Kerr, how do you define a, I guess, a pressurized situation and what sets those games apart from others that you play? Well, it has to be playoffs. I mean, regular season games are, uh, there can be pressure, but there's nothing like the playoffs. And to me, there's nothing like game seven. And you know, I, I played in a couple of Game 7s, one against the Pacers in the 98 Eastern Conference Finals. And Thanks for bringing that up. I thought I would bring it up right away just to get us into the show, Reg. But <laughs> no, that, that was the most pressure I've ever felt that game because it was the end of the Bulls run. We knew this was it. it the series was unreal. The home team won every game. Uh, Reggie's, you know, making game <coughs> shots in, in Indianapolis. I mean, it was, it was an unbelievable series. And that Game 7, you guys took a 13-point lead early. And that, that arena was quiet. We could feel it. We could feel the end of the dynasty right there. You win the game 88-83. What do you remember about that? Well, I know being up six with about five or six minutes left, there's a jump ball on our, on the Bulls' side of the court. It's between Rick Smith and Scottie Pippen. So we're assuming if we can get the tip, possibly go down and score, go up by eight, not that you're going to win the game, but that gives you a little bit of breathing room against a Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Well... Scottie Pippen wins the tip, Steve's in the game, the ball goes straight to him, he knocks down a three, cuts it to three, and it almost was like we excelled. We, we knew then that it was over, but if we could have gone up by eight, not to say that we would have won, but it would have been a little bit of cushion and breathing room. How, how do you describe, um, I mean, is there one game that does stand out that's, that says, yeah, that is the most pressure I ever felt. Or do all of those games kind of feel like, yeah, they were all pressure games and you can't differentiate between the degree of pressure, Kenny? For me, once the game starts, it's a pressure release. It's always like the pre-game stuff, the night before and up to it. Like, you don't, you don't feel the pressure of the game while you're playing it to me. Even if a game is coming right down no, to even no, if it's down to 10 seconds left in the game and it's a one possession, you say, if, if especially boy, this is a pressure, this is a pressure moment. Most of these guys have been rolling <laughs> when those moments are happening. So they're looking forward to getting the basketball or getting it in that moment. And you don't really feel the pressure. Only before the game, you get headaches. You can't sleep the night before. You're antsy. You, you can't keep any food down. You're not hungry. And then when the game starts, it's like a release and you're like finally here. But the most fun game like that for me, actually we lost. It was game seven against Seattle. Where I, that was the, the one game where for a whole half, every shot meant you go up one or down one for a whole half and including an overtime. Where I had never been in a game where every shot, the crowd would go crazy and it was so big of a, big of a play. But, when you're in the game, I don't know if you feel the yeah. pressure. He, the, it, these two guys are right. There's nothing like a game seven. Ain't nothing like it. And get, once the game starts, you're relieved. Because Kenneth, I'm a, Steve had a great point game seven, but Kenneth's point, the stuff in between game six and game seven, you ain't sleeping. You're, you're not scared, but you're nervous. You can't wait for the game. You're like, man, can we play tomorrow? But that's like the longest 48 hour, hour period in between game six and game seven. But you're so relieved when the ball is tipped off because then you can just think about basketball. But the days in between game in six and seven, it is the longest day it's in the, the world. It's the not knowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's what it was for me because you, you never knew what it, especially in playoff basketball, whether it's game one or game seven, you never know what's going to happen. Either you're going to take control of the series in game one, or if it comes down to a game seven, either on the road or at home, it's the not knowing. It's listening to all the pundits on TV and reading the newspapers, and, you know, walking the streets and listening to people. It's the not knowing. Can you, re many, can you relate, Jack? There's many different types of pressures. You know, there's the nervous pressure, there's the criticism pressure, and there's the performance pressure. Uh, I can remember one time playing against Portland, and we were up 3-1 and then they came back and tied it. So now we had to go to the game seven. That was really the only time 
I faced pressure. And then, of course, they choked at the end. And... Oh! <laughs> no, oh. I was, no, Shaq, really, I was, oh. hoping, I was yeah. hoping you were going to go there. No, because was... really, because you, when you talk about pressure situations and you talk about being able to see the finish line right there, and here you are, Smitty. There's no choke. You're up 15 in the fourth quarter. We're up 15 in the fourth quarter, but when it comes down to it, and Shaq knows, 32 seconds left, I drive the basketball. How many seconds left? 32 <laughs> seconds. I still remember. <laughs> you sure about that? Kenny, I'm fouled. Steve, I'm fouled. And no call is, you know, no foul is called. We, they were up 3-1. I think if we win that game, Shaq, we break up that dynasty of the Lakers. I agree because, you know, at that time, you know, that was our, you know, first championship. But before that, you know, we always got swept. So, you know, in the timeout, we went to the timeout and Phil Jackson said, this how you want to go out? All right, I'll see you next summer. And, that's, and, you know, he kind of, you know, relieved the pressure when he said that because he made us change our thought process. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny talks about the pressure being between games and that kind of thing. When Were you feeling pressure going into the fourth quarter at that time, though? You talk about what Phil said, but were you? do you feel pressure right there and say, look, this is, you know, we're, we're about to go, uh, we're about to go down here in our gym to going, these guys. Going going into the game, of course, you're, you're hyped, you're happy, we're at home. But in the fourth quarter, when you're down 15, you're, you start to, not again. I'm about to get killed this summer again. Shaq doing this, Shaq, you know, the Shaq and Kobe beat, they, you, mm -hmm. you know, here again. And then, you know, Phil did what he did, and then we came back, and then, of course, they choked. Like I said earlier, <laughs> we were able to win the game. <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I agree with everybody. It's no pressure like playoffs. But, but one uh, asterisk is I was in Washington, and we have to win one game to make it to the playoffs. And in Washington, we, we hadn't been to the playoffs, I don't, I don't know, since West Unsell had played. And so <laughs> being that we were young and I came from another team that had won, and it was a bunch of young guys in the older league, and, you know, we were going to get the Bulls next, which wasn't the best reward. Um, but I remember, you know, the whole seemed like all of D.C. wanting us to win that game, wanting to come out. And that was our first time to the playoffs, but that was a great game to get us into the playoffs, and we had to win. And usually the pressure, um, I would feel it more in between games, like you said, when I think about the repercussions. So I think, you know, man, this is, I'm going home, or while in Detroit, I lost in the game seven to LeBron, and I'm thinking, this may be my last time playing. I knew every time my team lost, I said, boy, it's gonna be a long week or two around here, because the one negative thing about sports, the star always gets blamed. No, nobody ever said, uh, you know, Dan Marley never won a championship. They never say that. They say Charles Barkley never won a championship. I say, yeah, I was asking some other guys on my team. That's, that, and, and you listen. Well, they throw him under the bus. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Great teammate. It, no, 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 I'm just saying. But, but Shaq, Shaq phrased it correctly. There's a, it's a different type of pressure on everybody. I know every time my team lost, it was going to be like, you know, Charles didn't win a championship. They never say the other guys on the team, but that's just that's but just. That, but you know what? That comes. I, that, I know that, that comes. That with comes it, with it. You know what? I, I wanted that. I wanted. Oh no, we all it. want it, but trust me, it does suck when it. When, it, it but does. you get the accolades as well, and I think yeah. you know, the one thing that you always know is when you're battling that your team is with you. But I do remember a story when your team is not with you, and they actually sometimes can put pressure on. Chucky Brown was at the free throw line. <laughs> we're playing Phoenix, and we, we come back, and, and he has to make two free throws to kind of seal the game. And um, Clyde Drexler comes up to Chucky Brown, and he comes to the free throw line. You know if we you miss these, we lose the series, right? Wow. <laughs> so, wow. So that, I, this is a true story. I know you're so, going to make these. So, no, so Chucky's at the free throw line, and I, I saw him. And I like, I don't think he just said what he just said. So I went back, I said, Chuck, you got these, baby, don't worry about it. And and this is like seven years later, Chucky called me, he said, remember that time? He said, because I came back up. He said he didn't feel pressure until his teammate put the pressure on him. And Did he hit the two? He knocked him two down? He hit the free knocked him down. Do you? Chuck choked again. Since game sevens, <laughs> since game sevens are the, are the, uh, the epitome and there's nothing quite like the pressure of a game seven, until you've gotten to one of those, uh, when you do get there, does it reveal something about yourself or about teammates that you didn't know before when you get to that, you get it, to that level? We call it hot potato. <laughs> Sometimes that ball is hot. <laughs> you know, some guys, they don't want to be the GOAT. So, you know, they'll make shots 
all year long, but then when you get in a big game, they get when somebody passes ball, it's gone before there's this, the ball. We call it hot potato because some guys don't have that. Like you know what? I don't care about missing shots. I never worried about missing shots. I'm like Reggie. I wanted to be in a game seven because it gave. I always felt like it gave me a chance to be a hero. I always felt like that. You know, I said, yeah, I, 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 I never were. I said, after the game, I said, oh, I'm going to get killed. But before game seven and during game seven, I said, I got a chance to be the hero here. Uh, yeah, I think I think it reveals teammates and, and players. And it shows, too, if you've been faking all year, like the rah-rah guys, the practice guys. Let's run an extra. Let's do this. OK, let's go to the game. Let's see how you're acting now. And you know, it, it reveals itself to everybody who well, you are. I'll tell you what, you know what fake. it also reveals? Coaches. That's true. Because in huddles, oh, yeah. a lot of times. You see that here? You ever see I that saw that. Hey, I you, saw you, that. You, you see it right right down here. Hey, 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 I, I, I played with a coach. We call him a dribbler. Because every time he wrote a guy, a, a, a number down, like one, two, three, four, five, everybody was dribbling. We're like, coach, we don't even know who got the ball. <laughs> he, was shaking, he was shaking. He was shaking so hard. Or they get in that timeout and say nothing. And. <laughs> so that's it for this video guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, if you did enjoy make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel, like I said at the beginning we're releasing daily videos for all of 2021 so you don't want to miss out, and yeah I'll catch you guys on the next video, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.